Hi, and welcome to another episode of McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy, and today we're going to be talking about seasonal indices and how to de-seasonalize data. And this particular video has been requested by Logan. Thanks for watching, Logan. If you'd like to request a video or you've got any questions, you can contact me at mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com. Let's get started. So firstly, we're going to take a brief look at what seasonality is. It's a trend or a change, also called a fluctuation, that happens at the same time and repeats throughout a year. We've got different examples of seasonality that can take place. For example, pension day. Now there are those within our community that are on some sort of government benefits and that's typically paid out either weekly or fortnightly. And on that particular day, people who are living from paycheck to paycheck would typically go into the grocery store and buy their groceries for the week or the fortnight. So grocery stores do see a spike in shopping on those days. Weekends, you've got certain businesses, cafes, restaurants, bars, clubs, nightclubs, would typically see more trade on the weekend. You've also got holidays and events, for example, Christmas and Easter, state of origin. All of these sorts of events can cause spikes in certain types of shopping. Here's an example of monthly video games in the United States. This would be fairly similar for Australia too. I would imagine that things like Xbox and PlayStation consoles spike in their sales in November and December when parents are buying them for Christmas. And then throughout the year, they're fairly stable. Weather also obviously impacts the seasons, but it also can impact the seasonality of products. For example, ice cream and soft drink would sell more when the weather is warm, but less when it's cold. And then things like coffee and hot chocolate might sell better in the winter time. We also have seasonality throughout the year at tax time. For example, in May and June, a lot of businesses might go out and update their company car fleet or their office furniture or their computer equipment in order to make advantage of tax breaks. Typically, seasonality lasts less than a year. So if you're seeing a trend that happens every third or fourth year, that's not seasonality. Now, statisticians have a technique that they call smoothing the data. And we've already looked at averages and moving averages. If you're wanting to catch up on that, I've done another video on four-point moving averages. That's a way to do something called smoothing the data. That helps patterns to stand out and enables trends to be seen and predicted, which is why we want to do it. It's very difficult when you've got spiky sales going up and down and you can't see whether there's an overall trend of increase or decline. Here's an example of such a graph. You can see the dark line underneath. It's very up and down, lots of unpredictability. But then when we've smoothed that data out, we take out the impact of the ups and downs and see an overall trend. The trend starts with a downward decline, but then steadily moves upwards and then starts to peter off at the end. So we're going to be looking today at the technique called de-seasonalizing data, and that just means taking the impact of seasons out. I'm going to do two worked examples, a simple worked example, and then I'm going to do a more complex worked example using the QCAA's exemplar. So the first step we need to do is to create some seasonal indices. That creates a comparison of every season, whether that's a day, week, month or quarter, to the average for the whole season. And we measure that over a number of years. It sounds a bit technical, but don't worry, I will take you through it step by step. This is a formula that you may have seen in your textbook that the seasonal index is calculated by dividing our data values by the average for the season. And we're gonna show you how to do that. Now, here's how to interpret seasonal indexes. They will usually be a number close to one, might be 1.1, and that would mean that the data value is 10% higher than the average. And we calculate that 1.1 take away one equals 0.1, which is 10%, it's 10% more. Or we might have a seasonal index of 0.9, and that would mean that our data value is 10% lower than the average for the season. 0.9 take away one is negative 0.1, so that's 10% less. So you're gonna see seasonal indexes one point something or just under one. Something really important to remember, and it's really easy to forget as well, but it's important. The sum of four seasonal indices, spring, summer, autumn, winter, or quarter one, two, three, four, will always add up to four. So if you've got 0.9 and a 1.1 and a 1.2, then the fourth number will make those three numbers in succession, they'll all add up to four. So here's our first worked example. We're going to be looking at some soft drink sales. You can see these are in thousands of dollars at a grocery store. You can see we've got three years worth of data and then we're measuring spring, summer, autumn and winter. Now something very important to note is you won't always see the years along the top. 
you might be given information with the years on the bottom. So it's very important you understand what you're doing to what type of data set in order to do this properly. So let's have a look at how we would deseasonalize the data. Our first step is we're going to calculate the average for each year. And that's why it's important that you don't get in the habit of just doing things horizontally or vertically, that you actually look and see where are the years and that you know the step is to find the average for the year. So I've calculated the average. Here's an example of how you would do this for one of the data points. So let's look at 2017. We know our formula for the mean is the sum of all the values divided by how many values there are. So we can do this for 2017. We're adding four numbers and dividing it by four. And we come to a mean of 63.75. And you can see that in the table, it's represented over there where the arrow is pointing. So we've now done that for all three years. Our next step is we're gonna divide every value in those first three years by the average for the year. We're creating an index of each data value compared to the average for the year. So let's look at spring 2017. It's going to be 75 and we take that from the table over here, divided by the average for 2017. And I've circled those so you can see where that data is coming from. And then our answer is 1.18. And we have to do that for all 12 data points. It's tedious, I know, it takes a long time. But it's important to know the process. Our third step then is to calculate the average index for the season. So we've created these indices, that's our middle columns, 2017 for example, that was that 1.18 that we created. Now we're going to average all three of the spring um, indices to find a seasonal index across all the years. So let's look at what we do for spring. Once again we're creating the average of all of those three indices, dividing it by three and we end up with that average, that seasonal index, 1.18. So these are now our seasonal indices. And we're going to use this information to deseasonalize our original data. That's that first three columns that we started with. It's important to remember that they should add up to four. Now, sometimes there'll be a little bit of a rounding error, 4.01 in this case. We don't have to worry about that too much. It's very minor, but it's a good idea to always check that your four indices do add up to very close to four, because if they don't, you know you've done something wrong. So now we're ready for our fourth set step. That's to deseasonalize that original data. So there's our original data. We are going to divide the first point data point by the seasonal index. And I've circled those so you can see where the information's coming from. And we get a seasonal index. So we've now deseasonalized that data. So the $75,000 of sales in spring has now been brought down to $63,800. The reason that it's been brought down is because spring is quite high for these soft drink sales. So we're bringing and making all the data roughly around the same level, taking out the impact of those seasons. You can see now that they're all in that 60 to 70 range and there's no big spikes in data. So we've deseasonalized the data. It's as simple as that. Tedious, but simple. So now let's compare that original data to the deseasonalized data. You can see that in that original data, there's lots of ups and downs, but now it's a lot more smooth. This is how it looks on a graph. The original data is shown by the orange up and down spiky lines. And now our deseasonalized data is showing a fairly flat green line. It was very difficult to see the trend before, but now we can see from this that there's really not a lot of growth in this soft drink industry. It's just up and down according to the seasons. So that's our first worked example. I'm going to take you through the QCAA's worked example from their sample IA2 exam. This is a complex, unfamiliar question. So let's quickly look through it. The table below shows quarterly newspaper sales of a convenience store in 2017. The long-term seasonal indices for the newspaper sales for the first three quarters are also shown. Thank goodness we don't have to calculate that ourselves. They want us to use this information to develop a least squares regression line to model the long-term trends in the time series data after deseasonalizing the 2017 figures. So that's our first step. They want us to deseasonalize these figures. And then they want us to use the model that we've created to predict the fourth quarter of 2018. So there's a lot going on in this question. Let's break it down. Firstly, I want to find that fourth seasonal index. Remember, four quarters add up to the number four. 
So what I should find here is if I add those three indices for quarter one, two and three and take it away from the number four, I'll get that fourth quarter index, which is 1.14. And I'm going to pop that in my table. That's a very important first step. You can't do much else without that number. My second step is that I'm going to deseasonalize the data. That means I'm going to take that original data and divide it by the seasonal index that the QCAA has given me. They've saved me a lot of work doing that. It's one step, divide each of those numbers by the number above in the table, and now I've got a deseasonalized sales figure for each quarter. Fantastic. But now I have to develop the least square, uh, squares regression line. So I'm going to take you through the calculator steps. Here's a calculator. I don't know if you've got the same one. This is a Casio. Um, it's the one our school uses. So firstly, you're going to press the mode button, and then you're going to press 2 for stat, and that's it shown on your calculator there. Your next step is going to be that you're going to pr put the data from this table into your calculator. There's a few little nuances with this, I'll take you through it. Firstly, you've got that X column on the left. You're going to type the numbers 1 to 4 and you're going to use the equals button after each entry. That will move your um, little um, space down on your calculator. You're going to use your Y column and type the data, which is the deseasonalized sales, also pressing the equals button to move the cursor down. You're going to use the arrow button shown here to move between the X and the Y column. Once you've got all your data entered in, then it becomes really simple. You've just got to remember which buttons to press. So you're going to clear your screen. You're going to press the AC button. That's down there in orange. Then you're going to press the shift button followed by the number one. What this will do is take you to the statistics function. Your screen's going to look like this. You've got some choices to make. You're going to select number five on your calculator. It's got reg next to it. I don't really know what reg stands for, probably line of regression. Okay, then this is the screen your computer's, your little calculator's going to show. So you're going to select one to get the value for A. Write down the answer on your exam. It's 2,000. 625.345. We go back to the beginning, clear that screen using the AC button, press shift 1 and then 5 again to go back to the regression screen. Then you're going to select 2, B. There it is there. Write down your answer for your value for B. It's negative 19.091. So now you've got a value for A and a value for B. You can develop the line of regression because you know it's in the form Y equals A plus BX. So we've substituted those numbers in. Now we have an equation that we can use to make predictions. So now the next step is to determine which quarter is the fourth quarter of 2018. That's what the number they want us to use to predict. Well, I've got 2017, that's four quarters. So four more on gives me the eighth quarter. So X is going to be eight. That's what I'm going to substitute into the equation that I've developed. So if I substitute that in, I'm going to be multiplying 19 by eight. And I'm going to end up with y equals 2472.617. Now you need to remember this has been deseasonalized. So we need to remove that smoothing impact, which is the opposite of deseasonalizing. We're going to reseasonalize. So we're going to multiply that deseasonalized sale figure by the seasonal index to remove that smoothing. So my predicted, predicted sales is going to be. 2,818.78 newspapers. Now, I must that round that up. I can't sell part of a newspaper. So it's going to be 2,819 newspapers. We're going to use the last index that we knew. Technically speaking, three more quarters on, there'd probably be different seasonal indexes that would apply. But we can say that sales probably from year to year aren't that different. So we're going to use that last quarter seasonal index to predict that last quarter. If we were asked to predict the third quarter, we would use the third quarter's um, seasonal index to predict that. My very last step is I need to write a statement. The predicted sales in the fourth quarter of 2018 is 2,819 newspapers. Well that's all we have time for today and as you can hear in the video the bell has gone. So this is from me Natalie McClutchy signing off from McClutchyMass at yahoo.com. I hope this has been really helpful. Like or subscribe to stay tuned to more future videos. Thanks for listening.